These notes are going to cover both sections 3.1 and 3.2. Both sections are extremely important as we move forward in this class because we'll be proving triangles congruence, which will take us through the rest of the semester. So please make sure that you revisit this video as necessary, as well as read the sections in your book for additional clarification. Now let's talk about congruent figures. If two figures are congruent, that means that they have the same size and shape. So if we were to look at these two pentagons here, in general, two geometric figures are congruent if one of them could be placed on top of the other and fit exactly point for point, side for side, angle for angle. So if we were to physically take the pentagon on the left and slide it over to the pentagon on the right and match up each of the points, then that shape should fit exactly on top of the other. That means that those two figures are congruent. Now in congruent triangles, all pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. The word corresponding will appear a lot this semester as well, and we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. Now let's also look at the symbol there. That symbol means that that statement is reversible. So we can take the converse of this, converse of it, excuse me, and it would still be true. So if we have two triangles in which all pairs of corresponding parts are congruent, then the triangles are congruent themselves. And the same holds true for polygons as we can see in the figures above. We were working with pentagons. Now let's talk a little bit more about what it means to be corresponding. So if I gave you this statement here that says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle HIJ, we can use that statement to recognize the corresponding sides. As you can see, I'm taking the first two letters. So A and B, those two letters are in the same location as H and I in the second triangle. So that's a pair of corresponding sides. Same with B and C. B and C and I and J are in the same location. The middle letter and the last letter in each triangle. So we can say that BC and IJ are corresponding sides. And then we could take the first letter and the last letter in each triangle. So AC and HJ are corresponding sides as well. Now, if you didn't want to use that, if you're more a more visual person, feel free to draw out two triangles. Just make sure that you label them carefully. Okay, so you can start by labeling the first triangle ABC in any order. I'll label it like that. But keep in mind, since we went from top to left to right, when we label HIJ, we want to take that same path. And then you can visually see that AB is in the same location as IH or HI, just like we listed for a pair of corresponding sides. BC is in the same location as IJ, and AC corresponds to HJ. And now we can list our corresponding angles. Once again, you can use the original statement and recognize that a and H are in the same location, so angle A corresponds with angle H. You can also use your diagram to recognize that as well, since A and H are corresponding angles, they're in the same location. B and I correspond. And also, C and J, they're the last letters in those statements, statement above. And if you look at the diagram that we drew out, C and J are also in the same location. Okay, so that's another way to look at it visually. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video, and I want you to try out this example on your own. So please do that for me at this point. Okay, let's go ahead and double check your answers with mine. If you chose to draw out a diagram, you could have as well. But please double check your answers with mine, and then once you're done, we'll start back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.